Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm gonna to show you how to create a Facebook ad for your new Shopify store. So if you've just completed your store then and you're excited to get started with Facebook ads, then this is gonna be the perfect video for you to watch. Or perhaps you've been running Facebook ads now then for a few weeks, maybe even a few months, and you haven't quite seen the results that you hoped for, then hopefully by watching this video, you'll be able to see maybe some of the places where you might have been going wrong. One thing that I do need to say before we start the video is that it doesn't matter how good your Facebook ads are. If you haven't got a professional Shopify store, then people won't trust it and therefore you you won't see the conversions or the results that you're hoping for so make sure you get some honest um, and critical feedback on your Shopify store before you start spending money on Facebook ads with that being said then thanks very much for tuning in I hope you enjoy this one um, if you do please do make sure you let me know by hitting that like button please make sure you subscribe leave any comments or questions down below I read every single one so I will get back to you um, and yeah let's get straight into it so here we are then in my ad account um, and the product that we're going to be advertising today is this portable bike pump I'm just going to quickly show you the ad so you can see um, what it is, what it does, etc. I find that by showing you guys an actual real product example, then I can be a bit more specific with what I'm doing in terms of how I come up with audiences, which in turn should help you guys kind of understand the way of thinking. Um, and no matter what the product is, then the same principles will still apply. So if you're advertising a dog product, or a cat product or a home and leisure product, then the same principles will still apply when it comes to the targeting aspects. So to start the video then, we need to go ahead and click create and go back to the beginning of the process, which will be creating a new campaign. In terms of the marketing objective, if you're using Shopify, then I'm assuming it's an e-commerce store and you're selling physical products, in which case I would recommend going for conversions. Now, if you have quite a large budget to play with, so say a thousand pounds plus, then what you could also do is alongside these conversion campaigns, which I'm gonna show you today, is you can run traffic campaigns and you can run engagement campaigns. And the advantage to running these two separate campaigns then alongside is, number one is you get a lot cheaper traffic because conversion campaigns are typically the most expensive data you'll pay for. And number two is you'll build up the social proof. So you can run page like campaigns to build up how many likes your page has. You can build up the engagement on the post on your ad. And what this does is it creates social proof for your ads and your business, your brand. Um, and in turn, that makes people trust you more because you have more of a following. So when it comes to naming your campaign then, I like to start with the actual product itself. So I'm just gonna keep it nice and simple and just call it bike pump. And then the next selection or the kind of next part of the name is gonna be what the conversion objective is. And then what that does then is when you've got tons and tons of different campaigns in your Facebook ad account, as an overview, you'll be able to see exactly what the objective, what the goal is um, of that particular campaign. Now I'm gonna leave both of these switched off. Um, split testing is a bit more of an advanced strategy. So if you're just starting out now, I would stick to the basics. And I'm also gonna leave CBO, so campaign budget optimization switched off as well, because by switching this on, essentially you give more freedom to Facebook in terms of how they're gonna spend your budget. And in the beginning, I'm a big believer of the results you get should be from the results of what you've done. That way it's instant feedback and you'll know if you've done something good or something bad. Whereas if you've give Facebook the freedom to kind of expand your interests, which I'll show you later, um, and to decide how to spend your budget, then there's no true telling that if you've succeeded, it's because of what you've done, or if you've failed, it's because of what you've done or because of what Facebook has done. Hopefully that makes sense, the kind of point I'm trying to put across there. Once you've chosen your campaign name, then go ahead, click continue, and this is gonna take us on to the next step of the ad creation process, which is the ad set level. So the way to look at it is like a three-tiered thing. At the top, you have the campaign on the left here, if you can see. Then you have the ad set, which is where you decide things like, as it says here, um, it can be the different offers, the, off the audience, sorry, that you're targeting, the different placements, the budget and schedule for this particular ad set. And then underneath the ad set, you have the actual visual part of the ad, so the actual ad creative. That being said then, let's get into the ad set, different options, etc. what we need to be doing here. So working top to bottom, I like to name the ad set at the end and I'll tell you why later on when we get to that point. In terms of the conversion, make sure you select your current pixel, the pixel that is installed on this site that you're gonna be running ads for. And in the conversion event, this is a custom conversion I've got set up, but your normal conversion then will just say purchase. So make sure you select the purchase one. If it's shown in red, then it means there haven't been any purchases in the last few days. So all you need to do is head across to your store you can reduce one of your products to free so no price at all run a test purchase um, and then that will then be green for you moving down then dynamic creatives are if you have your store set up on your actual Facebook page um, so our, you can ignore that for now again that's a bit more advanced same for the offer reason too let's just stick to the basics in this video 
Um, and now the audience section, essentially this is where we're gonna be defining exactly who we want to target with this specific Facebook ad that we're running. You can ignore the custom audiences box for now because this is for when you've already been running Facebook ads and you've built some custom audiences and then built some lookalike audiences based on that. So for now, essentially what we're gonna be doing is running cold interest tags in ads. Um, so this is where we can start to define who we want to show our ads to. So location wise, I always stick to the UK for a new product. So I'm gonna leave that as is. Assuming you don't know who your ideal target audience is, then what I recommend is going quite broad with your age and gender. So leave it as 18 to 65 plus, go for all genders. And then once you've run your ads for a week or so, then you can then go into the breakdowns within your ad manager account. Um, and that will tell you then what sort of gender um, is buying your product and what sort of age range as well. And then you can start to narrow your ads and start to kind of spend more money on what's working essentially. What we're gonna be most interested in and focused on is the detail tags in section in this video. So what I want to show you in this video is this image here on the left, as you can see the interest tags in image, because this is essentially ever since I started Facebook ads nearly four years ago now, this has been the basis for where I would start with every single product that I advertise on Facebook. This is the kind of strategy that I would use and then build things and develop things from here. So the reason why I like this strategy so much then is ultimately number one is because it works and number two is because it makes logical sense when it comes to targeting and it's a great place for anybody new to Facebook ads to start because it illustrates how Facebook ads work quite well and how to target your ideal customer. So for example, then this one is obviously based on the golfing niche. So if you were selling a golfing product and you for example were to target tiger woods as you can see it's the biggest audience the audience is represented by the size of the circle it's the biggest audience to target and this is because tiger woods is quite a famous symbol and you don't have to be interested in golf you don't have to play golf you don't have to buy golf products to know who tiger woods is and therefore if you were to target tiger woods solely as an interest on facebook you are going to be including those people those people who don't play golf as it says here in the legend the non-golfers and you don't want to target those people because those aren't the people who are gonna be buying your golf product. Now you can go one smaller than this and target Phil Mickelson. Um, if you play golf and watch golf, the chances are you will know who Phil Mickelson is because he's still quite a popular golfer, but not, he. I wouldn't call him famous. Or I wouldn't call him a celebrity, whereas Tiger Woods is. Therefore, there's gonna be less non-golfers who know who he is. As it says here in the legend again, the casual golfers, which means this circle here, this audience here, is gonna contain a higher percentage of golfing enthusiasts, and therefore you're gonna have a higher hit rate and a higher conversion rate in theory when it comes to selling your golf products. And you can even build on that even one further and go for Bubba Watson. Now the chances are, unless you're a golfing enthusiast, you won't know who he is. Or if I was to say to you, say Victor Hovland, unless you're a golfing enthusiast and follow the PGA Tour, the chances are you're not going to know who he is. So the only kind of people who do know who he is and therefore would be included in that audience, as it says here in the legend, is the golfing enthusiasts. And of course, those are the people who are more likely to buy a golf product. And this applies to every single niche as well that you're going into. So let's say, for example, you were selling a, a dog product in a dog niche. This green circle could be represented by, let's say, I love dog pages. You don't have to own a dog to love dogs. Then the next kind of level, which would be like a high a concentrated audience could be um, let's say dog food pages um, again they're kind of you're more likely to target dog owners because people who don't own dogs the chances are they won't be linked to dog food um, the dog food interest and then again you could go even one further and one deeper than that and go for let's say dog training or dog walking because the chances are you're not going to be linked to that interest if you don't actually own a dog yourself so hopefully that kind of illustrates what I'm the point and how um, how you want to go ahead and actually target your audiences. So that being said then, let's give you guys um, a real example of how this translates into your ad account. So obviously we're in the cycling niche. I don't really have a great um, knowledge of the cycling niche. So I wouldn't be able to name any names off the top of my head. So what I've done is I did a quick Google search and I've come up with or I found this list then of the all time list of British male pro riders. Now I'm not gonna go for Chris Froome because even though this is where sometimes it's an advantage not to have a knowledge of your niche, believe it or not, because if you haven't heard of the people, the famous figures within that space, then chances are they're a good one to go for. I have heard of Chris Froome, so I'm not gonna choose him, um, but I haven't heard of Mark Cavendish, so I'm gonna go ahead, put him in, see if we can target him, which we can. 
which we can and this gives us a potential reach then of 63,000 people and that's a bit on the small side I want to try and get that around about 200,000 so I'm going to go back to the list let's try the next cyclist which is Robert Miller um, we can copy and paste him in see if we can target him which we can't by the looks of things um, let's try the next one down let's go for Bradley Wiggins so we'll copy and paste him in and see if he comes up, which he does, 110,000 people. So we'll add this, and that takes our potential reach up to 120,000. Now, again, it's slightly small. Um, I like it to be a bit bigger than this. So what I'm going to do instead is just go ahead, click this suggestions box, and Facebook is going to give us a list of all these different interests that are related to the existing interests that we're already tagged in. So what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to go through these and kind of have a look at the ones that I've never really heard of before, um, and then just Google them to see what they are. So Pinarella. Um, I've never heard of Pinarello. I think it may be a manufacturer. Let's have a look. By the looks of things, then they make bikes. Um, but what I want to find out then is that they're purely specific to the cycling niche because you don't want to target, let's say, Under Armour because Under Armour make cycling gear, they make gym gear, they make golfing gear, which means within that interest, there's gonna be people from lots of different sports. We wanna find a brand that is specific to the niche that we're targeting. So uh, let's have a look. Pinarello, Italian bicycle manufacturer based in Italy. So by the sounds of it, then these guys would make an ideal interest to target. So if we add them to the list, that's gonna take our potential reach to 300,000 people, which is absolutely fine for this first ad set that we're going to be running. Now, this checkbox here, the expand your detail targeting checkbox, I get asked all the time, should you check this, should you not? Now, just keep an eye on this potential reach, just to give you an illustration of exactly what it does. The potential reach is currently 300,000 people. If I check this, it goes up to 44 million, which is essentially the whole population of the UK um, above the age of 18. So what it does then is it basically says to Facebook is that if they feel as if they can get more conversions by targeting people outside of these conditions that we've set, then it gives permission to Facebook to do that. Now in the beginner, I'm a big believer of not checking that checkbox because like I said earlier, I mentioned it briefly, is that when you're running Facebook ads, you want to know that if something succeeds or if something fails, it's because of what you've done. So by leaving this checked off, Facebook has to stick to these kind of targeting criteria. So if this ad set fails, it's because of me. If it succeeds, it's because of me. And it's a great way to develop your skill when it comes to targeting because you'll soon learn what good and bad targeting criteria is. With that being said, then let's move on. Um, now, if you want to target certain languages, you can go show more options. You can select different languages, different connections, examples, um, examples for example. But like I said, I want to stick to the basics in this audience and just go for cold interest targeting. Um, so let's move on to the placement section. Now this is something I have experience with um, and typically I'll know where the best conversions and where the best audiences are gonna come from. So in the beginning, what I recommend is well, it's difficult to say really because it depends on number one, what kind of ad you're running. So if you're gonna run a carousel ad, if you're gonna run a single image, are you gonna run a video? And then it depends on what size that video is, what size that image is, because it will and won't fit into certain um, if you can see like if you hover over this so Instagram feed we can see here that they recommend a square one by one but if we go for let's say the Facebook right column they recommend horizontal so you have to tailor this to the size of the ad that you're currently running because I'm running a video what I'm going to stick to is I'm going to get rid of audience network I'm going to get rid of stories I'm going to remove all of those I'm going to keep the in stream because if somebody's watching like a cycling video especially the chances are they're going to be heavily interested in our product I'm going to get rid of the search results because if somebody's actually searching for something the chances are that they're focused and they want to find something so it's going to take quite a lot to distract them from that um, focus that they're in I'm going to get rid of the in article too um, we'll keep the in-stream and the in-stream videos and then let's go through these one by one So Facebook newsfeed is a must because it's the biggest space on somebody's screen um, So they're definitely going to see your ad same for Instagram feed Facebook marketplace I'm going to keep because if somebody's in the marketplace then they're almost in that buying mood They're almost looking for something to buy so um, Trying to sell them an ad um, selling them a product through an ad almost goes hand in hand I'm going to go for the video feeds as well because 
Um, I must admit, I've felt guilty before of just watching videos one after the other for about half an hour in the Facebook news feed. So if somebody's watching a cycling videos and they see our products for a cycling product, then the chances are they're gonna be quite interested in it. I'm gonna get rid of the right column because of the certain dimensions and because I find these tend to work best for retargeting ads. Um, Instagram Explore, I'm gonna get removed. Um, Messenger Inbox, I'm gonna remove. And I'm also going to, I'm gonna keep that because it fits the size of our video quite nicely. So with that being said, and let's move on. Now what will happen is if you go too small with your audience and then you come down here and remove some of the big kind of placements, as you can see, that's reduced the audience size by 10,000. If I get rid of the Instagram feed, it's removed it by another 100,000. So just keep that in mind again when you are doing your targeting and when you are selecting your placements. Moving on to the next sections, we can go for show more options, but there's nothing really of interest here. Unless you're selling like a specific phone case or some sort of power bank, then you can come onto here, hit edit, and then you can select all mobile devices, OIOS, etc., etc., and that way you're targeting people using certain devices. But because our products then applies to anybody using an iPhone, anybody using an Android, I'm just going to leave that to all mobile devices. Um, and then the next thing we need to discuss then is the budget and schedule because this is a very important part to how your ads performance is going to go. Number one, we're going to leave the optimization for conversions. A conversion is a purchase because that's what we selected. Um, at the top here. So this is the conversion event. If you had this selected to view content, for example, um, then that would be the kind of conversion that you're targeting. The next is the cost control. Now, in the beginning, you're gonna have no idea what kind of average cost per purchase you can achieve. So I would leave this blank for now. And then when you get a bit more advanced and you've got a bit more volume going through your store. So typically when I'll get to about 100 purchases a week through a specific ad set, then I'll start to kind of play around with a different cost control and try and reduce my costs that way. But in the beginning, I always leave it blank myself. The budget and schedule, I would keep it to daily budget at this point because there's no need to get too specific when you're running the initial ads. We wanna give it the best chance possible, so just run your budget through the whole day by selecting a daily budget. And I want you guys to stick to at least 10 pounds per day, if not a bit more. The reason being is because there's so many people out there running five pound per day, six pound per day, three pound per day, two pound per day. Um, so by spending 10 pound per day, you're gonna outbid all of those people and therefore you're gonna get more favorable results. So stick to 10 pound per day and then I want you guys to run your ads for at least five days as well. And the reason for that is there's two kind of main reasons really. Number one is in the beginning, your results can be very up and down. So what you'll find is you might run this particular ad and you might get one or two sales the first day and then nothing for two days and then sales again. So by leaving your ads to run for, by for a few more days, it gives them a better chance just to kind of stabilize and bring in some more consistent results. Plus by running your ads for five days, you gather more data than if you only ran them for two days or three days. And therefore when it comes to making that judgment and making that decision of whether you're gonna scale it or not, or whether you're gonna narrow down on a certain age range, then the more data you have, then the more accurate decision you can make as well. And with that being said then, I just wanna finish on the conversion window because this is quite an important aspect of your Facebook ads. It's also a popular topic I get asked on. And essentially what this means is that you are setting the window in which Facebook will consider the results when optimizing your ads. So what that means is as it, as, as it is currently set, so seven days click or one day view, if somebody purchases, if somebody clicks on your ad and then makes a purchase within seven days, they will be considered towards that data when it comes to optimizing your ads. Whereas if you were to go to one day click or view, somebody clicks on your ad and then purchases two days later, because it's not within this conversion window, they won't be counted when it comes to optimizing your ads. So basically by having seven day click or one day view, there's gonna be more data considered and therefore in theory, now this is just my theory, your Facebook ads will optimize faster, which is only going to be a good thing. And with that being said then guys, that is everything I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to focus on that ad set because that is the th that's kind of like the area in which I see most people going wrong. They're targeting audiences that are either crazy too broad or they're targeting interests that are not very high quality. So that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. If you want me to build on this or, sh or you want me to cover something else in a bit more detail, um, just make sure you let me know. Post a comment down below. I will read it. I will see it. 
um, and I will respond to you as well. Um, finally, please do make sure you leave a like on the video. It will just kind of help this video grow in terms of views and help my channel grow. Make sure you subscribe too. Um, it's something like 45% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So the other 55%, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, and that's pretty much it. Thanks very much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it um, and hopefully see you in the next one too.